Greetings and welcome back. Kamal here and today we're going to be discussing this very peculiar case of the definite integral that is in fact something called the product integral. Yes, that's right, the dx in the exponent is not a typo. This is actually a thing and it's not even something completely isolated in theory. You can actually find it in weird places like statistical mechanics. It's that subject that Ludwig Boltzmann and Paul Ehrenfest were studying for most of their lives, and yeah, we all know that meme, even if we don't know the subject of statistical mechanics. But anyway, this is something quite interesting. I did make a video on it in the past, but that was a mere introductory video followed by a couple of examples, and I didn't exactly take a deep dive into its properties, which I will do in today's video after defining it. So we have the integral from a to b of f of x to the dx. Now, how on earth can we define this thing? Here's what we know. We know the classic Riemann integral, that is the integral from a to b of f of x dx is defined as the limit of a sum. Specifically, it's the limit of the sum over k from 1 to n of f of x sub k times delta x sub k as n approaches infinity. So if this is the Riemann integral, then we can define the product integral from a to b of f of x to the dx as the limit of the product over k from 1 to n of f of x sub k to the delta x sub k as n tends to infinity. Okay, cool. So we have a way of defining it, but we also need a way to calculate it to evaluate integrals. And it would be nice if we could make use of our knowledge of the Riemann integral to evaluate product integrals. And for that, take note of the fact that the Riemann integral is a sum and the product integral is a product. And we know that the logarithm of a product is a sum. So what if we just log the whole thing? So on the left, we have the logarithm of the integral from a to b of f of x to the dx equal to the logarithm of the limit as n tends to infinity of the product over k from 1 to n of f of x sub k to the delta x sub k. And provided that none of the terms in the product are zero, as in the product is not zero, we can switch up the order of the limit and the logarithm operators, giving us the limit as n tends to infinity of the logarithm of the product over k from 1 to n of f of x sub k to the delta x sub k. And we know that this product now turns into a sum. So we have the limit as n tends to infinity of the sum over k from 1 to n of the logarithm of f of x sub k to the delta x sub k. And of course, using the properties of the logarithm, this thing turns into a coefficient, or in other words, it's just going to be multiplied by the logarithm which is pretty cool. So we have the limit as n tends to infinity of the sum over k from 1 to n of log f of x sub k times delta x sub k. Now, what exactly is the benefit of all this effort? Well, notice now we have the limit as n goes to infinity of a sum over k from 1 to n of a function, in this case log f of x, evaluated at x sub k times delta x sub k. So this is exactly what the Riemann integral looks like. So that means the right-hand side is just the integral from a to b of the function log f of x dx. And on the right, we have the logarithm from of the integral from a to b, that is, of f of x to the dx. So we have log product equal to the sum of logs, which is quite beautiful. I mean, I know it's something that we all know, but just in this context, it looks gorgeous. This thing looks beautiful. Oh, and by exponentiating, we actually get rid of the logarithm here. So we have a way to evaluate product integrals, the integral from a to b of f of x to the dx equals e to the integral from a to b of log f of x dx. Now for a couple of examples, we'll first consider the integral of e to the x squared dx as a nice example for a product antiderivative. So this thing sorts out to e to the integral 
of log e to the x squared dx. We have some cancellation, so we have e to the integral of x squared dx, which gives us e to the x cubed by 3 plus a constant of integration c. Now, we know we can expand this as e to the x cubed by 3 times e to the c, which is just another constant. So in the case of the product integral, the antiderivative is determined up to a constant multiple, which is pretty dope. Now, what about the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine x to the dx, which we can write as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of sine to the dx of x because, well, there is nothing holding us back anymore. And this thing sorts out to e to the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of log sine x dx. Now, log sine x is one of Euler's famous log trick integrals, and we know it evaluates out to pi by 2 times log 1 half. So we have e to the pi by 2 times log 1 half, which looks awesome, but we could write this in a different manner. We can write this as e to the logarithm of 1 half to the pi by 2, and this gives us, well, some nice cancellation first up, and we have 1 to the pi by 2 divided by, or we could just write this as 1 by root 2 to the pi. Okay, cool. What about some properties of this very intriguing integral operator? First, let's introduce some notation. We have the integral of f of x to the dx, and we'll denote this by this thing. This is the product integral of the function f. Okay, cool. Now, what happens when we integrate a constant, a non-zero constant, that is? So for c being non-zero, we have the product integral of a constant c equal to e to the integral of log c dx. This equals e to the log c integral dx, which of course gives us e to the x times log c. Now again, making use of the properties of the logarithm, we have e to the log c to the x, and this implies the product integral of a constant c equals the constant of integration a times c to the x. And if we compare this result with the result for the classic Riemann integral of c with respect to x, giving us cx plus a constant a, we again see this nice pattern going from sums to products when comparing the results for the classic Riemann, which is a sum integral, to the product integral. Now, what about a power rule? That is to say we have the product integral of x to the n. This equals e to the integral of log x to the n dx, which is e to the n times the integral of log x dx, which we can evaluate using integration by parts. This gives us e to the n times x times log x minus x times a constant of integration c. Okay, cool. That is quite a surprising result, I must admit. Anyway, what about the product integral of an actual product? Well, in that case, we have product integral of f times g equal to e to the integral of log f of x times g of x dx. And this equals e to the integral of log, terribly sorry about that, log f of x plus log g of x dx. Now making use of the linearity of the integral operator, we have e to the integral of log f of x dx plus the integral of log g of x dx, which we know sorts out to e to the integral of log f of x dx times e to the integral of log g of x dx, where the first term is the product integral of the function f, and the other term is the product integral of the function g. So we have this really cool product rule here, that the integral of a product is in fact the product of the integrals. Another interesting thing we notice is what happens when we integrate the reciprocal of a function. That is, say, we have the product integral of 1 by f, where f is of course non-zero. This equals e to the integral of log 1 by f dx. 
Now log one by f is negative log f. So we have e to the negative of the integral of log f of x dx, which of course equals one by e to the integral of log f of x dx. And this thing is of course the product integral of the function f. So that means the product integral of one by f equals one by the product integral of f, which is again, such a nice result. And using this result, as well as the result we derived previously for a product, we have property five, which is the quotient rule for product integrals. The product integral of f over g equals the product integral of f divided by the product integral of g, which is, again, extremely cool. And while we're at it, we might as well discuss what integration by parts means in the context of a product integral. Again, starting with the Riemann integral, if we were to do integration by parts, we would write it as integral u dv, where u and v are both functions of x. So for the product integral, let's write this as u to the dv, where u and v are, of course, functions of x. Expanding this gives us e to the integral of log u dv. So this is, again, integration by parts, only instead of u, we have log u. So expanding this a bit gives us e to the v times log u minus the integral of the derivative of log u is, of course, 1 by u times u prime v here, and we're integrating with respect to x. And as an absolutely ridiculous looking example, we're about to evaluate the integral of sine to the cosine of x of x to the dx, which can be written as sine x to the cosine x dx. And we can, of course, write this as the integral of sine x to the d sine x. Now expanding this using our integration by parts, we have e to the sine x times log sine x minus the integral of log sine x would be one by sine x times its derivative, which is the cosine of x. And of course we have the sine x term over here as well. It's a nice cancellation. So we have this thing equal to e to the sine x. You know what? I'm just gonna write it as log sine x to the sine x times e to the negative integral. Cosine x is, of course, going to be sine x. And we have this constant of integration. So again, some cancellation. We have a times sine x to the sine x times e to the negative sine x, which is both awesome and ridiculous. It is ridiculously awesome indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Drop me a follow on Instagram. And in case you like the channel and the effort I'm putting out, consider supporting me on Patreon. As benefits to all my patrons, you actually get early access to my content before I upload it to YouTube. Thank you. See you next time.